Today we are going to learn modifying objects. Okay, modifying objects. So first of all, you can uh, turn on the layer that uh, you created in the past, and also uh, take up the command window and uh, leave uh, some uh, lines here so you can see uh, what uh, AutoCAD is asking for. And with that, so we are going to draw some um, random objects. So I'm going to uh, draw two lines here, so you can draw the same thing. So one line here, and draw another line, something like this. And then draw a rectangle. And something like this. And uh, several lines. One like this, and like this. Okay, we can't see. Okay, now it should be fine. And one like this. Okay, draw a few uh, objects like this. All of them uh, should be under a solid line layer. So first I think we are going to learn the command that is called a belly. Okay, so which is this function here under modify. Okay, under modify. So we have a belly here. And if you uh, click on the drop down button here, so they have a both belly chamfer and a blend the curves. And we are going to uh, take a look at uh, each. So first of all we are going to look at a uh, belly. Okay, so you can click on Fillet here. Okay, click on Fillet. So uh, the default radius is zero. Okay, default is zero here. So uh, a lot of time you can use a Fillet function as the extension function. So right now the default radius is zero. So we just uh, keep it as the default value. And uh, let's uh, hover your mouse on these two lines and see what's going to happen. So click on the first line. Okay, so the first line here, then click on that. Then hover your mouse on the second line. So it will connect it for you. Right? Give you a smooth curve and it connect those two lines for you. Actually, they should be able to connect this part as well, but mine is too short. And if I extend this line a little bit, so the same thing will happen. So uh, once again, if you click on Philly, and uh, select the first line, then hover your mouse on the second one. So it will connect those two lines together. Do you get it? Okay, and a similar thing for the bottom part of this piece here. Okay, so if you uh, do the fillet, since the radius is zero, then they, they should be able to extend them together. So uh, let's go to fillet here, okay, and click on the first line, okay, first line, then hover your mouse on the second line, so it will extend as well, like this. So this is another function as extend. Now of course you can use the function extend for this part as well. So uh, if you uh, hit ESC, exit that out. And also uh, you could use the extension function. Let me sure if I can find it. Okay, so this function here, this drop down button here. So you have either trim or extend. Okay, trim or extend. Okay, so similar function, you can extend these two lines. So let's click on extend. Okay, click on extend. Okay, extend. Then click on the first line. So first of all, the question says select the objects. Okay, so you need to select the first line and the second line. After you are done, you right click of the mouse. Means you are done with the selection. Now, you can click on the line that you want to extend. Okay, one more time. So this is a little bit of tricky. Okay, so you do extension. Okay, extension. So it has a question. It says select the objects. Or you could select them all. Which you click somewhere here. Then don't hold the mouse. Just click on somewhere here. So you select all the all of them. 
after you are done, you right click of the mouse. Okay, right click of the mouse means you are done of the selection. Then you can select the line that you want to extend. Then you should be able to extend all the lines. Yes, man. It's here. This one. It's not the minor, yeah, my yes, yours should be this button, trim, but there is a drop down button here. Mine is not Me neither. Okay, so like I said, it's a tricky. So after you uh, do the extend, so the first question says select objects. Okay, so you can't just select this two, it's not going to work. You have to select the two lines that you want to work on. So let's say you select this line and this line. Now after you are done, you right click of the mouse and okay, right click of the mouse. Then you click on the part that you want to extend. Mine says path does not intersect with the bounding edge. Yeah, me too. Okay, let's see. Hold on. Okay, so for extension, sometimes they won't work for the imaginary line. I mean, my works. I don't know why. So if it doesn't work, then extend this line a little bit until they have an intersection. Then it should work. So try it one more time. So make it longer. So just uh, click the line and make it longer. So they have intersection. So they're not imaginary lines. Then try this function one more time. See if it works for you. And select them all. Then right click. Then it should work. So sometimes it won't work for the imaginary one. But my, it works. So my here says a edge as well. It works for some reason. Okay, anyway, then besides that, let's uh, keep doing uh, Foley because uh, our purpose is learning uh, Foley. It's not uh, extension. We just uh, showed you uh, this part. Okay, so let's go back to the Foley option. Okay, and uh, click on Foley and. Uh, now it has a function called radius. Right now it's zero. Okay, so let's give a radius. Let's say uh, one. Okay, let's give a radius. And click on radius and tap one there. Okay, tap one there. Then do enter. Then let's uh, select the this, uh, uh, this two edges of the rectangle first and the second. So it will give you a fully. Okay, so one more time. So click on fully. And uh, now radius is still 1. So you can just uh, click on this two lines here. It will give you a fully. Okay. And after that, you probably want to reset it to 0 in case you don't get in trouble in the future. So click on radius here again, then tap in 0. 0 here. Now it's zero. Any questions? Okay, now we are going to move to chamfer. Okay, so chamfer here. So if you click on the drop down button here, so it has a chamfer. Okay, chamfer here. Okay, so in order to make the chamfer, so you have uh, two options. Either you give a uh, two length of each chamfer line. Or you could give a length and an angle. So either way. Okay. So the chamfer here, right? So you could give a length and a length. Or you could give one length and an angle. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, what do you think to do the length and the length? Length, length. I mean, I haven't clicked it yet. But, uh. Because if you put angle, that's the length of that. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Then you do this turns. Yeah, this turns is the length and the length. Okay, so first of all, we're going to do the two length first. So uh, click on this turns. Okay, click on this turns. Okay, and it says specify the first chamfer distance. So once you don't know what to do, then make sure you read the instruction. AutoCAD will tell you what AutoCAD wants. So let's tap in point 0.25. A zero point two five, then hit enter. A zero point two five, then hit enter. 
Besides, specify the second chamfer distance. So you could make them the same, but I'm going to do a 0.75. <coughs> 0 0.75. Okay, 0 0.75. Then hit enter. Now, size is selected the first line, so I'm going to select the top one. And size is selected the second line, I'm going to select the vertical line here. So as you can see, the top line is 0 0.5, and the second line is 0 0.75, the chamfer like this. Alright. And also you could do angle. Okay, so let's uh, click on the chamfer function again. So chamfer. Okay, and now we are going to select the angle. Okay, we are going to select the angle. Okay. Then it says uh, specify the length on the first line. So let's do a one as the length. Okay, one as the length. Okay. And uh, hit enter after you're done. Then it says uh, specify the angle, so let's do 30, okay, 30, okay, 30, then do enter. Okay, once again, length is 1, and angle is 30. And it says the uh, pop up question says select the first line, so I'm going to select the bottom line, okay, the bottom line. Okay, it says select the second line, so I'm going to select the vertical line. So it gave me uh, the first line is 1 as the length and the angle is 30 degrees. Does this make sense to you? Everyone's good? Okay, so next one we're going to do the blend curve. Okay, blend the curve. So I'm going to ask you to draw two curves. So arc here, do you still remember? So do the drop down button here. We're going to do three points. Okay, three points. It's a little bit easier. So the drop down button here and do three point. Okay, three point. And draw a curve, something like this. Those three points. Then hit ESC. Then draw another curve. Something here. Oops. Something like here, here, here. So draw this uh, two curves. Two curves. Everyone's good? Okay, so blend the curve means we're going to create a smooth curve and connect these two curves. Okay, so let's do blend the curves. Okay, so once again, it's under the fully function, the drop down button, and do a blend the curves. Okay, says so the first object. I'm going to select the first object, the first arc you did, and it says select the second object. Then click on the second one. Then give me a smooth curve. And of course, if you don't like that, then you can drag it around, something like this. And until you get the curve that you want. Got it, everyone? Okay, next function, we're going to learn break. Okay, we're going to learn break. So still, it's under modify ribbon. Okay, so click on modify. Click on the drop down button here. Okay, modify the drop down button here. And we have a break and a break at point. Okay, so two functions here. Break and break at point. And the next one is join. So we're going to uh, take a look at this three functions together. So first is a break. Okay, so break. And uh, we're going to uh, draw a line. Okay, so let's draw a line first. Okay, so go back to the line command and draw a line. Okay, draw a line here. Okay, draw a line here. Then let's do a break. Okay, let's do break. So this function here, break. See it? Break. So as the picture is 
showing you you're going to uh, pick up two points and the middle part is going to be gone. Okay, so you're going to pick two points and the middle part will be gone. So let's click on break, the break, and it says select the object, then you select this line, after you're, uh, then it's going to be your first point. And then you can click on the second point, then the middle part is gone. Yes? Uh, but how are we able to make, make it more precise? It seems like wherever we click first is where the point is. Like what if I want to uh, like have, a, have the break start at uh, point 10 inches in? That's a good question. So we're going to learn in next class which the function is called a construction line. So what you want to do is you do a vertical construction line here, then offset of that vertical construction line, let's say uh, 10 units to the right, then there is a point. So you will be able to uh, snap that point. Yes, but right now we just break it as randomly two lines. Yes. So one more time, so select any point, it's going to be your first point and the second point. So the part is broken two parts, into two points, two parts. Okay, and the next part is uh, break at a point, okay. So this function here, break at a point. So as the picture is showing, so uh, the part is going to be broken as uh, two part, two, two parts. So let's click on this, break at the point. Okay, so click on break at the point, then select the object, then you select this object, and uh, says specify the first broken point, then you randomly click on the point, then if you hover your mouse on top of the line, so you'll notice that this line is broken as two parts. Did you get it? So once again, so I'm going to go back. Okay, so this is one line. And modify and I click on break at point. Then it says select the object, then select it. And it says specify the first break point. So randomly uh, click on the point that you want to break. Now after that, if you hover your mouse on top of the, this line, it's going to be two parts. See it? Okay, and now we just uh, broken uh, break this line, right? And now sometimes we want to join them together. Okay, we want to join them together. Then you're going to use the join function. Okay, so join. So we still go to modify here. Then this function here is called join. Okay, this function here is called join. Okay, so click on join. And then read the command. It said select the source object. So we are going to select them all. So click on the left top part of the mouse. Don't hold the mouse. Just click it once. Then click it up at the bottom right part. And all of them all are selected. And uh, they are joined. How do you get to join it together? You, once you are done, you right click of the mouse. Then they're joined together. Did you get it? Okay, so one more time. So when the back, now they are separate. Okay, they are separate. So go to join. Okay, then select the source object. They just select them all. So select this and select this. After you're done, you right click up the mouse. Then it becomes one line. Yes, and also you could draw two lines, such as here, I'm sorry, to so draw, go to the length man, so horizontal one and a vertical one, and uh, escape. And if you hover your mouse on top of this tool, so they are all independent two lines, they are all individual two lines, right? They are all individual two lines, and you could draw them together in case you want to move them together in the future. So click on Modify, then click on Join, and select them all. With the right click of the mouse, then it becomes one part. It becomes one part. 
and you can certainly move it, use the move function, we're going to introduce it later. Got it? Okay, this is the join. So in order to be able to join together, they all they have to have a common point. So if just the two, uh, like uh, this is three lines, you will not be able to join them together. It's not going to work. So they have to have a common point. So now we are going to uh, draw a few lines and uh, take a look at uh, extend and uh, trim. So I'm going to draw a couple of lines like this. The first one, second one, oops, not working. Second one, yeah, third one, like this. And also uh, draw an inclined one. So draw four lines like this. So there are some intersections. You might want to trim this out and then trim this off and then trim this off. Okay. So you have to select the objects first before you trim because um, a common mistake is people do trim, then they click here and they click here and tell me they're not working because you have not selected the objects first. Okay. So I'm going to skip. So you have to select the objects first. Okay, so click on trim. Okay, click on trim. Okay, if it doesn't work, then do the drop down button and select the trim. So first the question says select the objects. Okay, so I'm going to select them all. Okay, select them all. After you're done, you right click of the mouse. Okay, right click of the mouse. Now you can hover your mouse on top of the parts that you want to trim off. Do you see it? So once again, one more time. Okay, so you can't adjust the trim, it's not gonna work. So you have to select the trim. And the question says select the objects. So you select all the objects. Or you could adjust the select those two lines if you only want to do there. But I would adjust the select them all. After the selection, you right click of the mouse. You right click of the mouse. Then you can hover your mouse on top of the parts that you want to trim off. Does this make sense to you? Okay, great. And same thing for extend. Okay, so I'm trying to extend this line to here. And possibly let this one to here. Yeah, my works. If yours work does not work, then you can do the setting and make it work. So extend the same thing. So extend. So first the question says select the objects. So you have to select all the objects first. After you're done, you right click of the mouse. Then you can hover your mouse on top of this one. Okay, my works. And this one, yeah, my works too. And also you can extend this line. Yeah, and if it doesn't work, and uh, the student said uh, select the edge and do the setting. But anyway, <laughs> my works for the imaginary ones. If it doesn't work, we'll worry about it in the future. Okay, so now we selected the extend. Sometimes you want to switch in between. Then what you can do is you hold the shift key. Okay, hold the shift key. Now I'm in the mode of extend. Then if you hold the shift key, it's going to be a trim. So hold the shift key, then you can trim them. Okay, and if you release the shift key, then it's going to be extend. And the next function is called offset. Okay, so starting next class, we're going to use offset every class. So you need to know how to use it. <laughs> so this is an offset. Okay, offset right here is offset. Okay, so offset means you're creating another line or another shape with a certain distance. So such as this line, I could offset this line to the right with two units or offset this line up with three units or offset this line up uh, uh, with the three units. So this is offset. In AutoCAD we use this function a lot because not as the solid works. You can type in the dimensions and this one you cannot modify. 
after the line is there, then it's there. You can't dimension it afterwards, so you have to use offset function. So we're going to uh, use this offset function. Okay, so click on offset. Then the size specify the offset distance. So let's say you want to offset this line three units to the right. Okay, then you're going to type in three here. So specify offset distance. So just to type in three. Okay, type in three. Then hit enter. Okay, hit enter. Then it says select the object to modify to offset. So uh, select this line. Then if you hover your mouse to the right, then offset it to three units to the right. And if you hover your mouse to the left, then uh, offset three units to the left. Okay. Yes, and also uh, this line here, then you can offset two units up. See if you can get it. So like I said, this is the starting next class, so we're going to use this a lot. So offset. Okay, so first the question, specify the offset distance, so type in two. Hit tap in two, then hit enter, and select the object as the question popped up. So select this horizontal line here, and if you move your mouse up, then it's two units up, and if you move your hover your mouse down, then it's two units down. Okay, and also for geometries, you can do that as well. So let's draw a circle. So draw a circle like this. So let's make it as uh, 10 units as uh, diameter. Okay, 10 units as diameter. Okay. Then let's do offset. So once again, the diameter of the circle is 10 units. Okay. So let's do offset. Okay, offset. And it says specify the offset distance. So let's do two. Okay, let's do two again. Okay, hit enter. Then select the object. Then you can select the circle. And you, if you hover your mouse in, it's two units in. And if you uh, hover your mouse out, it's two units off. This is also our part of the homework. Use offset. If you uh, calculate the dimension, there are a lot of calculations. <laughs> if you do offset, it's a lot easier. Make sense to you? Okay. Yeah, same thing you can do for a rectangle. Okay, so draw a rectangle here randomly. And you can offset. So offset select the distance. So do the distance. Let's do a one uh 2.5. Okay, 2.5 as the distance. Okay, 2.5 as the distance. Then select the off the objects. So right now it's a rectangle, so you can click that once. If there are four lines, then you would have to click them four times or select them all. So click on uh, this rectangle. So within is 2.5 or with uh, or going out 2.5. Either one. Everyone's good. Okay. So next function we're going to learn stretch. Okay, stretch. <laughs> Okay, so you can stretch out on your own if you're tired. <laughs> okay, so stretch function is over here. Okay, over here. And before we move forward, we're going to draw a shape first. So we're going to draw a shape something like this. something like this and uh, so this part you probably want to extend that and this part you probably want to trim that off so it's the two functions we just learned and close this part okay close the part either trim or extend oh uh, yeah you can do that too I 
have you got it? Bishop, okay, thank you. Okay, so now we are going to stretch this part out, and this function is a little bit tricky as well, but uh, so this is a stretch, so you can actually just look at my first, then you do it on your own. So stretch, okay, so look at the screen. Okay, so this is a little bit tricky. So stretch, okay, select the object. So I'm going to draw a box. So from uh, bottom right to the top left, because I don't want to select all of them. Okay, so from bottom right to the top left. And then select the objects. No, after I'm done, then I right click of the mouse. Then specify the base point. So I'm going to uh, select this point. Then when I stretch, okay, I'm able to stretch. Okay, and stretch it here, maybe this here. Okay, so I'm going to go back and let's do it together. So stretch. Okay, so stretch here. So once again, so, so, so select the objects. You don't select them all. You don't do from the top left to the bottom right. You do from the bottom right to the top left. So you they only select the parts that everything is involved. So if you do the from a bottom right to top left, okay. So the lines they are not fully selected. They are not going to be selected. Okay. Yeah, and after you're done, you right click of the mouse. Then if you pick this point, then you can stretch that out. Like this. And also you can give a certain uh, distance if you want to. But uh, so far we are good. We are just learning, so we are fine. Did everybody get it? Or do it one more time? Yes, I know. So this is a tricky. <laughs> so if you didn't get it, so, do stretch first. So click on stretch. Okay. Then it says select object. So once again, you select from the bottom right to the top left. Don't do opposite. So click on the bottom right. Don't hold the mouse. Then click the top left. So until the green box is showing up, not the blue one. Okay. Green box is showing up. After you're done, you right click on the mouse for confirming. It says specify the base point or just I guess, give a displacement. So I'm going to select this point here. Okay, select this point here. Then I'm able to stretch the shape based on the point I selected. Okay, next function we're going to learn a lengthen. I'm sorry, lengthen. Okay, so it's still under modified. Let me see where that is. Lengthen. Yeah, it's over here. Lengthen. Okay, lengthen. Which means you uh, make the line longer. Okay. So uh, let's draw a line. Okay, let's draw a line here. So let's make it as a 20. Okay, let's make the length as 20. Okay, let's draw a line and make the length to be 20. Then escape. Okay, now I'm trying to uh, a lengthen the line. Okay, so uh, let's click on this function here, lengthen. Okay, okay, and you have a uh, few options. You could uh, uh, the uh, lengthen the part, the line with the delta, which is a percentage. Uh, I mean the the difference, or you could do as a percentage. Like you want to align 20%, 120%, or you could give a total distance. So first of all, let's try the percent first. Okay, so click on the percent. So right now, Ian says uh, enter the per uh, percentage uh, length. So let's do uh, uh, 120, so which the part is going to be 120. Did we tap the line says 20? I don't remember. <laughs> okay, so let's do a 120 first, and we'll tell you the length. Okay, so tap in 120, then do enter. Okay, it says select the object, which is this line. 
Okay, so if you click uh, on the hover your mouse on the left, it will align 20% to the left. If you hover your mouse to the right, it will align the the 20% to the right. So that's what the 120 means. So it give you extra 20% for either the left or the right. Make sense? Okay. And also you could do as the total. Okay, so uh, let's escape. Then go to modify and do lengthen again. Okay. And now we are going to do total. Okay, do total. Okay. So total uh is twenty, so let's do uh twenty-five. Okay, type in twenty-five. Okay, type in twenty-five. Okay, then hit the inner, then select the object. Then if you select to the left, it will give you five units more to the left. If you uh, click on the right, then it give you uh, five units to the right. Okay, and we are going to uh, take a look at next the function that is called a scale. Okay, that is called a scale. So let's uh, randomly draw a circle first. So I skip this function first. Then uh, let's randomly draw a circle, and uh, the size doesn't matter. Okay, let's uh, make maybe make it as ten. Okay, so I'll do a circle and make it as ten. The uh, diameter as ten. Okay, diameter is ten. And did you remember we taught the last week? So if you want to have a center lines here. Then you could adjust to go to annotate and do a center line, right? So before you do that, you probably want to switch to center line. Okay, switch to the center line layer. Okay, click on the center line layer and go to annotate and give a center mark. A center mark. Then select the circle. Then you got an automatic, uh, center mark here. Okay. And this is a new version of AutoCAD. And if you went back to the older version, or sometimes if your arc is not closed, let's say it's an arc, and it's not perfectly closed, then the center mark will not work, which you would have to manually put the center lines there. So what you can do is you draw a line. Okay, so make sure you're on the center line layer, then you draw a line. You draw a line. And you should be able to snap the quarter point, okay, the quarter point, quadratic point, whatever you want to call. If it's not a snap, so you go down here and make sure you check the quadrant point. And make sure you check the quadrant point. So it's down here, the snap function. The okay, snap function here. So drop that button here, so you check quadrant. See it? Okay, so you check this, then you should be able to snap. So I'm going to draw one line here, left to the right, and escape. And draw another line from bottom to the top, uh, top to the bottom. So those two lines, they are exactly on the circle, which is not very good in a technical drawing, especially in mechanical, because we're supposed to have some extra parts. They're not supposed to be exactly on the part. Okay, so in this case, previous people, they used a function called a scale. Okay, so we are going to scale it. Let's see where that is. Okay, scale is over here. Okay, scale. See it? Okay, so let's click on the scale function. Okay, click on scale function. Okay, it says select the object, then we're going to select those two lines. One, two. And after you're done, you'll right click of the mouse. Then it says specify the base point, which is the base point you want to uh, scale the part. So I'm going to select this center one. Okay, the center point as my uh, base point. Then next question, specify the scale factor. So I'm going, you can just uh, actually hover your mouse on it, or you could type in uh, 130, okay, 130. 
the head inner. Oh, I made a mistake. One point three. Yeah, maybe one point three. Okay, then if you made a mistake, then go back to undo. Hey, undo here. Okay. Uh, undo. Okay, then to scale one more time, select the object, right click of the mouse, select the center point, scale factor, let's do 1.3, enter, okay, it worked. So this is another way to do center lines by using scales. Make sense? Okay, great. And the uh, next one, so we just learned joint 20 minutes ago. And sometimes you probably want to use the opposite function, which is called explode. Okay, so uh, let's draw, uh, so first of all, let's draw four lines first. Draw something like a rectangle. So let's draw a line, okay, four lines. So click on the line command. So click on here. Oh, I need to uh, change it to the change the layer to solid line. Okay, change your layer to solid line first. Then draw a few lines. So like this. And part is not closed. I need to close it. Okay, I need to extend and trim. Extend. Okay. And if you hover your mouse on this rectangle, so you will realize there are all four separate lines. Okay. There are all four separate lines. However, if you draw it with rectangle command, a rectangle command, it's a whole rectangle. If you hover your mouse on it, so it's an entire part. Okay. So this part here, there are all four separate lines, right? And you probably want to join them together. So let's see what's going to happen if we join them together. So go to modify. Okay, and go to uh, join. Do you still remember? Join function here. Then click on join. Then it says select the objects. Just select them all from here, top left to bottom right. After you are done, you click on, uh, you right click on the mouse. Then it's a whole part. It's a whole part. It's a whole rectangle. Okay. And sometimes you want to modify some lines. So you probably want to break this rectangle first, which is the function called explode. And it's over here. Explode. Okay, explode. Okay, explode. Okay, so click on this. Explode. Okay, and still select the object. So let's select this rectangle. After you're done, you right click of the mouse, then you are on site. Next one, let's take a look at the function that is called a move. Okay, so I'm going to uh, uh, delete this rectangle, this tool here, and draw a new one. Uh, they are all exploded. Okay, a rectangle here. So let's say I want to move it. Okay, let's say I want to move it. Okay, so if you move in this way, and this thing will happen, so you won't have a rectangle anymore. So you can't move in this way. So the way you move is you select this up, the function here called move. Okay, move. Okay, so click on move. Okay, it says select the objects. Then you just select this object. Because it's a whole rectangle, so you can just click once. After you're done, you right click of the mouse. You right click of the mouse after you're done of the selection. It says specify the base point. So let's select the bottom left point. The bottom left point. The bottom left point. Now you can move it to wherever you want. You could also give a distance, such as 15. Or move it up with the distance 10, or just randomly drop it down. Do we need to go over one more time? 
Everyone's good? Oh, great. You guys are great. <laughs> this function here that I need to teach twice. Okay. And this is a move. And another function is called a mare. It's called a mare. And let me find out. Yeah, it's over here. Mare. Okay. So in order to mare the party, you would have to have a mare line first. Right, so let's draw a line on the right side of the rectangle as a mirror line. So draw a line on the right. Okay, and now I'm going to move mirror this part to the right. And in AutoCAD, when you mirror, you have two options. Either you keep the original part. So when you mirror, you have a, a rectangle on both sides. Or after mayor, the original part will be gone. You only have the new one on the right. So let's see it. So let's click on mayor. In mayor. And then says select the objects. Let's select this rectangle. After you're done, you right click on the mouse. Here it says specify the first point. So we we want to mirror this part with this mirror line. So let's click on the top point of the mirror line. So the top point of the mirror line. Here it says specify the second point. So let's click on the bottom point of the mirror line. Now after that, they give you a question, so you have to answer it. Otherwise, it will dis will be disappeared. So it says erase the source objects or not. And if I want to have both, then I say no. If I want to have both parts, then I say no. Okay. If you do yes, then the uh, first part will be gone. So you say no. Then uh, that's all we have for uh, the lecture part. And the second part is going to be your lab part. Yeah, I'm going to uh, briefly talk about this tool a little bit. So uh, we have a two exercises today. So the first exercise here, so there are only two dimensions on this drawing. But I'm pretty sure that we can make it. Okay, so only two dimensions. Okay, so I gave you a hint that a 0, 0 is here. Okay, so it's here. So first of all, you're going to draw this circle, which they gave you a diameter, which is easy. Now you want to figure out this triangle, which they did not give you any dimension. You could do it with a heavy math, but you don't have to. So uh, one hint is you try the polygon. So polygon here, it will ask you to identify the edge. So tap E3 there, which means it's a triangle. Let's see if you can figure it out. Okay, so this is the first part. So do the polygon for uh, this triangle. And also they have a different type of lines and this is the second part. So apparently you're going to use a function that we taught in class in order to make the other circle. What what function that is? But first of all, you want to make the bigger circle because the smaller one we don't know the dimension. But the bigger one we says that after is four. So what's how are you going to make the smaller one? Which function are you going to use? You're going to use offset. Okay, so you draw the bigger one first, and also you want to draw all these straight lines as well. Otherwise, you would have to offset twice. So do all these straight lines as well. They have the dimension. See, they have the dimensions here. So after you're done of the other one, so you offset inside with 22 units. Do you see it? So offset with 22. But before you offset, you want to join all those parts together. Otherwise, they are all separate parts. When you offset, you will see the line going up and this one is going out. So they are not going to connect it. So draw the other one first, then join all those curves together. Then you offset inside. And also, this line is a straight line. It's not a circle. This is a common mistake as well. So if you look at it, so it's a straight line. It's not a part of the circle. This circle only goes here. So this is a straight line. Okay, 
And also, these two centers, they're not concentric. So one center is here for the bigger circle. For the smaller circle, the center is here. Okay, then try this on your own. See if you can figure them out.